Hello folks and welcome, MX Linux XFCE desktop. So today I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. You know, everybody's screen resolution and monitor sizes are different, but I just wanted to let you know what I was filming in today. No scaling today, 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna be talking about system tweaks. So basically um, minor tweaks is what I'm gonna be um, basically covering today. So there is a MX tool and also an MX tweak tool. And I'll talk about some of those things in there. I'm not going to cover every single option, but I'm going to talk about some minor tweaks for your system. I'll cover up, um, I'll cover um, slight boot options, auto hide, intelligently hide, moving your close button from left to right, uh, default icons on your desktop, and the icon sizes and fonts. And I'll also talk about the panel bar, how you can customize that slightly also, or do some minor tweaks there. Welcome folks. You can now see the system information. I'm going to use a very common key to close this box, which is Alt and F4. Alt F4 it is. So you can see this strange piece of wallpaper. I just threw that up as an attention getter. I have three icons that have screenshots and a screenshot tool. And I do recommend that you use this if you're going to alter any stuff on your system. You have entire screen active or select region. I usually disable my mouse pointer for screen captures, but you can find the tool in your MX menu by typing in SC. Right click, add it to your favorite desktop or panel or both, and you can always delete the tool after you get done with it. So these are screenshots of my appearance font section, Alt F4 to close, a screenshot of the MX tweak display section, talking about scaling and screen resolution, Alt F4 to close, and the last one is off the panel bar with the first tab, Alt F4 to close. And I'll actually talk about the second and third tab also, Alt F4 to close. Let me first talk about the icon sizes on your desktop. And also, if you don't have your um, system icons on here, you can certainly add them. I don't need them though, and I'll show you why that I leave mine off. But I'm leaving these screenshots here for your reference for the text sizes and the icon sizes themselves. Right click on your screen, desktop settings, and go to icons. So I'm currently using 104. You will have a def uh, definitely a different number than mine. So if you li like large icons, you may want to increase the size. Okay, I just, that's a comfortable size for my screen resolution. My screen is 43 inches, if you're curious. I have a different way to arrange the orientation. I also have some show icon tooltips that I can alter. I also can add default icons. Now, before I click anything here, let me just point out the fact that you normally will have Thunar, your file manager, sitting down in your panel bar. Okay, and I'll also talk about the vertical panel bar versus the horizontal one. But in either case, I'll first stop, make a stop in here. So I can resize the icons my way. Hopefully you've seen the, the video on Thunar, the file manager, by doing what I'm doing. Uh, you can do it the old fashioned way if you like. But more importantly, I have a file system, devices. I have my internal uh, backup drive. I have my trash can and file system and my standard home folder, all in one shot. Alt F4 to close. So I really don't need that on my desktop, but I certainly don't need three of these. And why is that? Because as I pointed out, my trash can is right here. So is my file system and my devices. I'll use the conventional close button this time. So I find this unnecessary to have these icons. At a bare minimum, this would be the only one I need because I have my trash can right here and the file system. Alt F4 to close this window. I'm going to turn that off. Now, if you wanted to see your removable devices, and what are the categories for that? Well, those are network shares, disk and drives, and other devices like USB sticks and etc. All right, I have a backup drive here. But however, I don't need that either because I can see my backup drive right here. I'll use the conventional close button this time. So again, icons, sizes, if you want to use the standard icons, then you can click those and unclick those if you wanted to remove them off your desktop also. All right, I'm going to use Alt F4 to close this box. 
Now, the next set of things I'm going to talk about you can achieve by going to your system settings. You can also uh, click the MX tools in here and get to just about everything else in here too. There's lots of different ways of doing things. I'm going to be talking about fonts. I'm going to be talking about your panel, the window manager, and tweaks. So let me close that box conventionally and walk over to the MX menu because this is normally in your favorites. If it's not, you can certainly put it there. So the first pit stop I'm going to make is boot options. Now, do you have a single boot system or a multi-boot or a dual boot? If you have the multi-boot, dual boot, you may have a different uh, way of booting your system. However, in my case, this MX XFCE installation is done on one hard drive. All right, with that said, I'm going to click the boot options and maybe I want to increase that boot up time or the boot up screen. It would help if I put the right password in here. Anyways, there's your timeout. It's the very first option. Anytime you alter that, the apply button lights up. Okay, so if I put six seconds or eight seconds, maybe that's sufficient. You know, usually when you're dropping it down to this region here, that's probably not sufficient amount of time for you to make a change in case you need to. All right, so you also have boot two. What's the primary thing? If you have a different options than mine, then that's what you have. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about those two and then again, I'll hit apply. I'm not going to hit apply. This is my boot options. So as I'm moving downstairs, I told you there's many ways to click things, many ways to get into, well, different areas. So I'm going to hit tweak in here for a second. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is the actual panel bar itself. In the normal installation, it is done vertically. I'm going to hit apply. This is where the panel bar is. The reason I chose to put my panel bar in the other orientation is I have more real estate in between these two icons that I can add more things in other words. So that's why I chose my panel bar on the bottom. Again, it's a minor tweak and it is your choice. You can now also see who, who made that wallpaper with that eyeball on it. I got it from wallpaperswide.com. I forget how long ago, if you were curious. So I'm gonna put this back to the bottom. Minor tweak. So a um, couple of things in here. You have um, your display. The GTK scaling factor. Use this sparingly. Let me show you what it does. I'm going to hit apply. You probably agree that everything is humongous. Kind of blown off the screen almost. All right, use that very sparingly if you're going to use it at all. And I'm going to hit apply. Screen resolution. Mine is capable of doing 4K. My screen is 43 inches. So a lot of times I always make mention of what I'm filming in. And the reason for that is because a lot of your YouTube videos are filmed in 1080, if you did not know that, and also 720. Those are common things that I'm filming in. I sometimes film in 4K. But in general, that is the common resolution I film in. And you can always adjust your YouTube player with that gear symbol to different screen resolutions on your player. But a lot of people that run laptops don't have all these options that you see in front of me. They may have only two or three screen resolutions. And just because you have a 28 or a 24 inch monitor, I'm just throwing out numbers, whether you run that in 1080 or 4K, they do have different visual outcomes. Visual outcomes, that means your text, and your icons look different on those kind of screen resolutions. Hopefully that was clear. But in my case, I can change the resolution and hit apply. Scaling, resolution, and X render scaling is also in here. Use these very sparingly. Make a screenshot also. All right, so the next option, I'm not going to talk about these, but I will talk about appearance. The appearance window and panel, you can go through your regular settings also. Here's the appearance, here's the panel, here's the window manager. So I'm gonna go this route, because it's just convenient. But I'm just saying, there's multiple ways of doing things. So I'm gonna go to fonts and talk about fonts for a second. Now I have a screenshot of this already. There's my default fonts, including my custom DPI. I'm gonna make my first stop at default font and click that 
and change this to something ridiculous like a 26 and hit enter and select just to give you the option of different appearance. You probably agree that this is overkill. Right, let me resize this box. This is way too huge. Alright, let's click this back to something normal. However, since 10 and a half is too small for some, and it is to me also, so I'm going to put in a 13 and hit select. 13 is more accommodating in my book. But then again, everybody's different. Everybody's screen resolution could be different also. So I'm going to put this back to 10 and a half. 10.5 is where the default was. How do I know that? My screenshot told me so. Okay, now I'm going to talk about custom dots per inch. Override the detected monitor resolution if fonts look too large or too small. So there's another option for you. I'm just going to copy this number. And then I'm going to increase that to say um, about 130 for instance and hit enter. Okay, so there you have slight differences there. Might be slight outcomes differences there too, depending on your monitor. I'm going to highlight that and put that number back and hit enter. Now I'm back to where I was. Except, if you don't mind, I'm going to change that number to 13. Because I'm going to run this the whole video with that in a 13. I think it's a little bit nicer. But that's just me. Alright, so I am going to talk about the next one in line. is window scaling. Be careful with this one. Watch what happens when I hit 2x. A lot of people have a difficult time recovering from this. Depending on your screen resolution and your monitor. Everything is blown out of proportion. So just caution to the wind on this one. That is called window scalings and it's found in the appearance section under settings. Many ways of doing things, minor tweaks. All right, let's talk about another minor tweak that um, maybe you want this X over here for some weird reason or you want the X way over here on the left. Window manager. Again, there's many ways to get into window manager. You could go through here and find window manager also here. But I'm going to do it using the MX tweak tool, window manager. Now I'm going to move this X over to here. All I need to do is that. And now that's X is over here and then I'm going to move it over to here. I'm going to grab a hold of it and drag it over to here. I'm just doing a click and drag. I can also move the rest of these with it if I want to. So let me move it back to where? Here. I can also transpose these two. Now I just flip these two. Okay, so that's the normal icon size in a lot of your windows for the resizer. You can also do it my way. What am I doing? I'm just clicking on this imaginary line right here. Just another little tweak. All right, so you have a different font size for your title font. Okay. Also, same deal. I'm not going to mess with that though. Uh, I'm not really going to click every single thing in here. Otherwise, this video is going to be enormously long. So let me go move on to panel. Now the panel you have lots of options with. I showed earlier that you normally have it installed in a vertical fashion and I moved it in this direction because I needed some more real estate in here. Or I wanted some more real estate in here. And these are kind of small depending on how you're watching this video. You know, these are enormous, but you can also affect the panel in different ways. So I can open up the panel preferences inside of MX Tweaks. I'm going to use Alt F4 and Alt F4 to close all of that stuff down. You can also open up your panel settings this way. And you can also right click on your panel and get pretty much the same option, pretty much the same options. Now I'm going to talk about this length of the panel bar. Now right now you'll see that it's blinking red, kind of flashing. Maybe you can't see it, but I can. So what I'm going to do is actually talk about these options going from top, from the bottom to top. So I don't recommend turning this off and I'll show you why in a second. So now I'm going to reduce this panel bar to one. It's accommodating the current icons that are in here. That's why it won't go to zero. However, if I do this, it all I got is a half an icon. If I close this box and you try to right click on this, it's like right clicking on your screen. It's the same thing. 
So if you have a half an icon, maybe you can click that and recover from this. If not, right click on your desktop and go to application settings and look for your panel. And now you can turn that back on and slide this to whatever length you want it. The reason for this uh, also is even if I leave it at this size and I add more icons, this thing will grow with you. In other words, automatically increase. That's all that means. How many rows are you allowed? Six, which is kind of ridiculous. But more importantly, you are allowed six. Now the row sizes themselves, I'm gonna copy this. Let's try that again. I believe is 128. So I'm gonna increase that to 128. That's the maximum row size. All right, that's also ridiculous. So what I'm going to do here, since I copied that number, I'm going to paste it back in and hit enter. Now I'm back to where I had it. Again, it's all subjected to your screen resolution and your monitor is usually how you do a touch and feel on this stuff. The next item is intelligently hide. Normally you have never. The never means it's just going to leave your panel bar as is. So what is intelligently hide? All right, I'm going to have to turn this first off to show you that example. I'm going to use a web browser first. So um, you can now see that the panel bar is still lit, lit up. And as I take my semi minimized web browser, I'm going to move it downstairs slowly until it hits that bar. And then you see the panel bar go away. Now you can also see the name of the wallpaper that I'm using. Got that from wallpaperswide.com a couple of years ago. As I move this back up, the panel bar reappears. As I go full screen, it disappears or you can do it the old-fashioned way all right you see what I'm talking about as I move my mouse cursor downstairs it reappears so that's what I mean by intelligently hide anything that touches that panel bar will make it auto hide I'm going to use alt F4 to close this web browser and I'm going to open up the file manager briefly and let you give you another demo for the same thing because it has got a lot of white surface so as I move this thing toward the bottom of my panel bar it auto hides now you can see the name of the wallpaper and as soon as I drag my mouse cursor downstairs it reappears and when I pull it back up it reappears that might be an option you may want to think about alt F4 to close right click panel preferences that's what that means the uh, always auto hide is self-explanatory meaning as soon as you do that it auto hides everything and you have to actually move your mouse to make it reappear at all times just to make it reappear reappear so that's why I prefer that but again it's your choice minor tweak I'm gonna skip over the appearance session and go over to items because this video is getting a little lengthy it's into the 18th minute but I think this is important if you decide to play a lot of people want to move stuff around rearrange the furniture in other words all right, so first of all, I do recommend a screenshot of this box. If you have more icons, then you'll have an arrow here. And I would suggest you resize this and still make a at least active window screenshot, if not select region. Why is that? Okay, I'm going to show you a simple one, the whisker menu. You could have multiple launchers in here, though, and you have no idea what they do. That's why I'm referring back to this. These are in a specific order currently. What I'm going to do is take this whisker menu, which is the MX icon, and I'm going to move it over here. It's rather easy to do, actually. It's sitting right next to my time, or I can move it up a little bit, where it's kind of over here now. Let me close this. There's no more MX icon in the corner. It is now over here. Get the idea? I can also use my start key, if I have one on my keyboard, to open that. All right, another tip. Start key is sometimes called a Windows key and it has a symbols of, of a window on it. And uh, some people call it a super key. Right click on your panel bar. Let's put, put this thing back. Whisker menu. I'm going to slide this in the upper direction and now it's back into the left corner. And I'm going to leave it that way. And I'm going to say thank you for watching folks and take care.